His honesty. All right, thank you, D.A. There should be plenty of fireworks out in the backcourt tonight in this one. Of the guards you played alongside, who is the best combination passer score? Oh, man, Kev, you put me on the hot seat. That's a tough one. I just got to give everybody <laughs> you a, a shout-out. played with a lot of them, though, didn't you? Yeah, I know, man. I didn't know it was going to be a test today. Uh, I got to go, <laughs> go with my boy Rod Stricker when I played with him at the Wizards. I think he's oh, the yeah. best finisher ever, and he led the league uh, in assists. My boy Jay Will, shout-out to White Chocolate. Uh, I mean, he is one of the most creative players I've ever played with but he could shoot it from deep he was a guy that liked to shoot it from curry land and he could pass it and, and then lastly i'd have to of course go with my man mike Bibby. mike Bibby could do it all so I, i've been blessed to play and fortunate to play with some great scores and and combination passes in this league three terrific names here are the five for the clippers paul george is out there with patrick beverly then it's Marcus Morris. Then it's Ivica Zubac. And it's Leonard in at the small forward. And for Boston, Hayward at small forward. With Tatum at the four. Walker and Brown, they're manning the backcourt. And it's Tice in at the center. And every season, I mean, Hayward plays with so much confidence these days. This is his first free throw of the game. Three shots. Three shots. Free throw drop for Hayward. A superstar summer, Greg, for the Los Angeles Clippers in Kawhi Leonard and in Paul George. Greg, they have two elite wings, great defenders in their prime. Give them credit, but, but also Kawhi Leonard pushing the levers behind the scenes. He, he wanted another superstar to join him in recruiting Paul George, who still had two years left on his deal in OKC. Kawhi took unprecedented control of his free agent destiny. And he makes all three. And, and with all their rangy wing defenders, the Celtics are well-suited for the modern game. Oh, yeah, they make it tough for opponents to get clean looks on the perimeter, uh, GA, with their defense. I mean, it's a strong defensive team also because of the competitors that they possess. Brown kicks to Walker. Now, here's Tice, defended by George. It's Brown on the wing. Launches it, five on the clock, sinks the triple. And determining Brown ceiling, I mean, how good of an outside shooter can he become? I mean, to me, that's, that's the only question. But uh, he may have already exceeded expectations. Now here's Leonard. He had a 30-point outing their last game against the 76ers in Philadelphia. And here's Walker outside. The Clippers grab the miss. Last time they met was in Los Angeles. Yeah, a really close game between these two in that last matchup. It took a total team effort for them to get the win. Yeah, and without all the points they got off the bench, I mean, there's no way they could win that game. I mean, it, it was the sixth man to the rescue. That's just a product of good pass work. I mean, nice team basketball right there. Pass to Tice. Tatum on the wing. Zubats defending. Releases. Tatum's shot is off. Clippers have gone just one of four to get this game started. And George kicks to Leonard. Back to George. Shoots over Walker. And George gets it to go. And when the size advantage is as big as it was there, I mean, that's exactly what he's supposed to do in that situation. Tatum on the wing. Shoots from 12. It doesn't go for him. The Clippers go the other way with it. They've missed three of their first four shots, having a little trouble finding their legs. Up top, Leonard. He's covered by Brown. Tatum against George. And stolen by Hayward. And up the court come the Celtics on the break. Walker leading the charge. 
And that was all created by Hayward's defensive work. He does so much to spark their transition game. The pass to Leonard. Poked loose. And we're approaching about three and a half minutes played in the first quarter. Now Walker. 14 points from him the last game against Houston. Hayward passes to Walker. Shot clock at six. Over Beverly. Shots good by Walker. Oh, with this shot area quickness, Walker can usually carve out space from mid range. George against Brown. White block shot. George with the bucket. Boy, he is looking confident. Love how they're using him so far. Yeah, that's because he's getting his number called early. I mean, he's doing his part to help carry the offensive load. Now, here's Brown. He's coming off a 19-point game against the Rockets in Houston. And Walker is what we call thirsty. He's thinking of firing as soon as he gets the rock. Great presence of mind from the point guard. And here comes Walker, leading the fast break. for his fourth field goal of the game on just five shots. Oh, this first quarter couldn't be going much better for him. Four for five from the field to get things cracking. Here's Leonard. He's been quiet so far. Still no points in the game. Beyond the arc. A shot that time. Not on target. And here's Boston. They're on a 15-6 run. Round kicks to Walker. A floater. It's hauled in by Beverly. I love to see the defense exhibit some passion in protecting the rim right there. Passes it to Zubat. Six on the shot clock. Here's Morris. Misses off the right iron. For a player who's almost a sure thing to score in tight, that was a stunner. Clippers trail by nine. Down low. Count it. Good. Ah, when Morris gets it down in the paint, he's deadly. Using his big arms to get these shots up and in. Brown the pass to Tice. There's Walker with the three. That's good. Basket number five on a five for eight night shooting. He has created some terrific opportunities for himself and really made the most of them. Right, well, that's three straight German League titles for Daniel Tice. I mean, before he made his NBA debut at the age of 24, he's an athletic two-way player, and he's shown he belongs. He's not using his head this quarter. He's got to get back to finding high percentage shots. Outside Tatum. Shoots over Zubac. And it hung on the rim, but wouldn't fall for him. And last season, Daniel Tice shooting over 40% from long range. And Chris, over 75% around the rim. Yeah, Kevin, wouldn't you call that great efficiency, both inside and out? New contract this summer to reward his terrific play. Such a wide open look. Walker's got 15 points. Yeah, they built up this lead three points at a time. Oh, yeah, they certainly found something along the perimeter. Just an onslaught of three-point bombs. And the Clippers decide to take their first time out here. You played for a lot of different coaches in your career, Chris. I'm sure you saw characteristics that you like in a head coach with all the different people you played for. Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, you definitely want coaches that challenge you, that, that want to make you better, um, that helps with the team chemistry. But, but I would say, number one, you want a coach that understands they are such a good coach that their job is to infuse you with as much information during practice and then come game time, they trust you to go out and do your thing. They don't micromanage during the big games. They say, wait a minute, we put in enough practice time. You know what we should do. Now go out there and execute. The ones that trust you, you got to love. Right. Now here's Walker. 15 points in the game. From 10 feet out, nice shot by Smart. And the Celtics lead by 15. Defensively, they've been a step slow here to start. Pass to Williams. 
Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. On offense, here are the Celtics. They're on a 17-6 run. Walker finds Canner. Outside Williams. Left side Walker. No good on that one. And the Clippers will come the other way. Coming off that loss against Philadelphia. Yeah, on the road, you're already a little out of your element. Then the misses from the line become contagious. And then it starts to become a mental block. Uh, you start to think, oh, man, I can't. I can't miss the next one. Boston on D. 13-point lead. And out of bounds as the Celtics gain possession. And let's quickly check out the best young defenders, how they've been playing in the low post lately. Your rookie block leaders for the past month. You look at Williams, an intimidating defender, third in the league. He's been a factor on the inside, an impressive stretch for him defensively. Now here's Williams, still looking for his first bucket in this one. Here's Walker. It's hauled in by the Clippers. Now here's Williams. Shamit with it. He's coming off a 19-point game against Philadelphia. Floats one, and Cantor pulls it down. For the three, and Smart with the basket on the assist from Ennis Cantor. Smart's got five. Yeah, they're relying on their three-point shooting and getting pretty good results. Shamit kicks to Williams. it loose. The Clippers again turning it over. Already it's February. Hard to believe. Let's see how the West is matching up. You look at the Clippers. The season well underway and they've been solid in third right now. You know for Los Angeles they have caught the entire league off guard. This was not a position anyone thought they'd be in at this stage of the season. Well, yeah Greg I mean they had a plan coming into the year. I mean they stuck to it and it's worked to perfection. This quarter expending tremendous energy at the offensive end. And he's not slowing down. He's still calling for it. And so it's Williams who brings it up for the Los Angeles Clippers. It's an 18-point game. Pass to man. Outside Williams. Harold trying to free himself up. Williams gets the bucket. And that's an example of playing big, adapting to the situation. Oh, yeah, difficult finish, but if you expected him to back down, better think again. Now, here's Brown. Very solid contribution from him as he averages over 20 points a game. Brad Wanamaker's checked in for Kemba Walker. Rodney Magruder's checked in for the Clippers. Here's Wanamaker. 11-point game, his last outing. For three. That one's off. He starts the game with a miss. Clippers trail by 16. Now the pass to Green. Back to Williams. Good, and it's Green picking up the assist. And it's six points for Williams. The Celtics shooting at a nice 53% rate to start the game. They are sticking to the campaign. 121 left to play here in the first. And Brown throws it down. Excellent all-around performance so far. Hints the big lead. Yeah, Greg, they've come out of the gate strong at both ends of the floor. Just, just in total control so far. That one wide left. Jesus surprises anyone with that miss. When he's left alone like that, you can usually count it. Uh, defensive breakdown. And they can't capitalize. He'll hit that shot almost every time. Now, here's Shamit. He's been patient so far. Nothing on the scoreboard yet. Green dishes to Williams. There's the triple. Unable to get that one. And the Celtics going the other way now. Tough loss coming against the Rockets in the last game they played. Well, in that one, you could pretty much see the writing on the wall. Their performance was lackluster at best. But Greg, they just weren't ready for that game. It, it looked like they just weren't prepared. The final score tells you the story.
Shamit the pass to Williams and the foul on Marcus Smart. That's his first foul. 15 seconds left in the first. Williams, that's good. Just a positive force right now for these guys. And though his team has fallen a bit short, it's not because of him. And here is Brown on deep. And he was able to put it up in time, but doesn't fall. Kemba Walker firing on all cylinders for the Boston Celtics. Going on an absolute rampage, piling in the points. He dictated the pace of the entire quarter. And we'll be back with you shortly. Paul George had that nasty broken leg back in 2014. He describes what inspired him to come back even stronger. My inspiration really came from my mother. You know, her dealing with stroke, her dealing with really being down and out. You know, I saw her fight back. That was enough for me in my darkest days. Uh, I knew it was nothing to what my mom went through, and she came out perfectly fine, so. Well, what a story. George worked hard to get back and has not disappointed in his return. You know, recovering from a devastating injury is never easy, but George's perspective and commitment helped him to overcome it. And so far through one quarter, it's been a lopsided game. We'll see if that changes here in a second. And a very convincing performance from the Celtics so far. Coming in hot. They were sharp from the perimeter right out of the gate. Well, at the defense spinning in circles. Hard to cover all that ground. And a chance here presented by Gatorade to see who's on the floor. All fueled up and ready to go for the start of the second quarter. On the floor for Boston. Smart and Brown outside on the wings. Ennis Cantor is out there with Williams. And it's Wanamaker in at the one spot. And here's Cantor after Lou Williams was able to get the three to go. Knocked away. Wanamaker, the pass to Smart. Green kicks to Shamit. Back to Green. Pass to Magruder. Lock at six. I'm deep. Rebounded by Smart. Celtics leading by 10. Fires for three. Connects from three-point range. Smart's got his third basket of the night. Off the dribble. Smart showing the body control on that shot. And after signing a four-year, $52 million contract extension, Marcus Smart rewarded the Celtics, Chris, with the best season of his young career. Yeah, his best shooting percentage is by far. I mean, add in his continued progress as a playmaker. Don't forget, he's the man on the defensive end. I think that's money well spent for Boston. Jason Tatum, he's checked in for the Celtics. Hayward comes in for Jalen Brown. The Clippers also changing it up. Marcus Morris is checked in for Green, and it's Leonard in for Landry Shamit. Here's Wanamaker. No points in the game yet for him. Now Smart. Cantor trying to free himself up. Rebound by Harrell. And Leonard has it in the corner. And there's the call on Gordon Hayward. That is his first foul of the game. Daniel Tice is checked in for Boston. And then for Los Angeles, Paul George comes in for Rodney Magruder. And it's Patrick Beverly in for Williams. And a little under two and a half minutes gone by here in the second quarter. Good ball movement here by the Clippers. Beverly the pass to Harrell. And he's good on the three ball. Man, the triples keep falling, guys. That's three in a row. Smart against George. Back to Tatum. Four on the clock. Elbow shot. That's good on the jump shot. And the Celtics lead by 12. 
You love the confidence of Tatum. He'll rise and fire, even with the defender glued to him. Beverly finds Leonard. Great touch on the 16-footer. Leonard's got his first bucket in this one. And if you're the guy who has to guard him, it is never going to be an easy night for you. Outside Tatum. Back to Wanamaker. Inside, Tice. Fouled in the act of shooting. Gets the bucket anyway, so a three-point play chance for him. Unwilling to let up, even for a moment. That's his killer instinct, just fanning the flame. Oh, yeah, and that's what you love about him. He shows no mercy, even with a comfortable lead. What's up? That's good from Tice. And some teams have fancy dinners, guest speakers, and field trips. I mean, the, the Celtics culture is more straightforward. It, it's all about the work. Now here's Harrell. He's coming off a 10-point game against Philadelphia. And his scoring is going to get most of the attention, but his rebounding also stood out. He did a lot of glass cleaning in that game. Austin with the ball. Kawhi Leonard missing from long range. George against Tatum. Hayward on the wing. Gets it to go from beyond the arc. Hayward's got six. And that work ethic, the core of the Celtics' value, are written on a big placard on their locker room wall. Yeah, it, it emphasizes unselfishness, execution, toughness, and hustle. Those are the values of their team. And so it's Boston with it after Paul George getting his three to go. Here's Smart. And he can't answer back the three-pointer offline. And it's Jason Tatum with the foul. That is his first foul of the game. Austin making a switch here. Walker's checked in. Pass to George. Outside Leonard. Three-pointer. Rebounded by the Celtics. They led by as many as 18 points. At the conclusion of this game, they're off to Minnesota where they'll take on the Timberwolves. And that'll be game one of a four-game road trip. That is prime time point guard play. A sensational find by Walker to set up the easy buck. Austin shooting their fifth free throw of the game here. What's up? When you're a championship contender, Chris, what are the aspects, the, the characteristics of an offense that is needed to, to get to that level? You have to be balanced. You just can't be an inside team that can't shoot threes. You can't be a team that just shoot threes. You have to have guys uh, that can dribble, that can get their own shot. You need guys that can catch and be standstill shooters as well so that when you have the guys that dribble to get that space, their hands are ready and they're already ready. They're already prepared to shoot. And then it'd be really nice to have a post player, a dominant inside finisher, a guy that once he gets it in the painted area, everyone's going to have to watch out because he's going to dunk on them and make a post player. And the technical free throw is good. Well, for so much of what Paul George brings to the table, you have to start with his defensive impact. He is one of the top defenders in the league at his position, if not the best. Now, here's Beverly. He is still scoreless so far in this one. Six to shoot. Takes a three. Good for the basket. Starting off one for one with that shot. And they're getting their points now almost exclusively from the triple. Four of their last five makes are from beyond the arc. Here's Tice. 11 points for him in that last game against Houston. And, yeah, and don't leave out his rebound, Kevin. I mean, he had a big impact in that game with all his effort on the glass. Hayward against Leonard. Hayward kicks to Tice. Offline with his three. 
Yeah, you look at George with all he does, Greg, you sometimes forget how good his perimeter defense is. Well, I mean, his teammates and coaches won't ever forget about the impact he has on that end. Even when George isn't scoring or the shot isn't falling, he is still a monster on the floor just with his defense alone. Ball's knocked loose, stolen by George for the finish. And he gets the basket. Officials blowing the whistle, so a chance at the line for one more. Yeah, they've gotten into a nice flow this quarter. And this is his second trip to the line tonight. And all you need to do is see his free throw percentage, guys. 90 for the season to know what kind of year he's having. Walker's got the ball here for the Celtics. Six-point lead. And foul on the shot. He'll shoot two at the free-throw line. Well, you have to give credit to Kimball Walker, who has always found ways to improve his game year after year. Has worked on that shot and tool set enough where he can now be a handful to defend for any guard. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. The first free throw is good. And with Walker, as he has progressed as a player, you know, Greg, so has his leadership. And Kimba has been a natural leader for so long during his time. When your leader puts in the work that Kimba does, it has to inspire the rest of that roster. And so Walker nails both of them. No wasted trips at all. They're taking care of business at the line. Beverly, the pass to Leonard. Outside, George. Here's the three. The shot comes out. Now the Celtics take it the other way. To the middle. And he stuffs it. What a pass to set him up. Wow, he's just incredible at understanding the game. Hayward is so good at making the defense pay for leaving guys open. George passes to Zubats. Outside, George. And the call will be against Brad Wanamaker. That is his first foul of the game. And now only one away from being in the penalty. Pass to George. To the inside. And the pass to Beverly. Lock at six. From past the arc. Hayward grabs the board. Hayward's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Here's Walker. He gets hauled in by Los Angeles. That's a shot they're always happy to get, even when he blows the finish. And it's George finishing it off. And guys, when George gets cooking, you are in for a long night. He's just fantastic at finding different ways to score. Taking matters into his own hands. Yeah, we didn't expect to see that kind of finish. No, but his teammates love that kind of energy, fellas. I mean, dunks like this demonstrate leadership. Here's Beverly after the basket by Boston. Here's Leonard. He averages over 27 points a game and seems to always find a way to score. And he's got the athleticism and strength to be a powerful presence inside. Leonard never afraid to get in and mix it up down low. Walker the pass to Hayward. To the paint, stolen by Zubats. And now here's George, the fast break opportunity. And Kawhi Leonard with the slam. And the feed from George couldn't be better. The, the timing, the placement, everything about that dish was pinpoint. A lot of player rejections in uh, the playoffs last year. In fact, the highest in three decades. Seems like tensions, this with the officials, are still escalating. 
Well, yeah, uh, the relationship between the players and the referees, uh, you know, it, it's always an ongoing process, and, and it's definitely getting better. But last year we had the um, highest number of new referees uh, in the history of the NBA. And so you're going to have a growing pains when you have younger guys and, and understanding the culture of the league. But I like the way that we're going, and uh, some of those rejections are, were warranted. Some of them weren't. I just look at that year as, ah, uh, that just happened. Let's see what happens. I'm not going to hold players and referees accountable to last season I think we need a little bit more context before uh, we make a decision on player ejections and flagrants and things like that just a little more research oh, finally he's getting himself to the line he's gotten much more aggressive as the game is going on and there's the whistle three second violation and a look now at the Boston Celtics upcoming schedule on Friday, they'll take on Carl Anthony Towns and the Minnesota Timberwolves. And then on Sunday, they'll be facing off against DeMarcus Cousins and the Los Angeles Lakers. And looking at that Jazz matchup, it's the second game of a back-to-back, -back, and you know they're going to be feeling the effects of it. Playing that much basketball in that short amount of time really takes a toll. And here is Los Angeles now, following the miss by Kemba Walker. Passes it to Mann. Down to five on the shot clock. It's tipped. The shot misses. And the Celtics going the other way now. They led by as many as 18 points. Wasted no time on that one. And that's now seven points for Jalen Brown. Well, how about the quickness of that release? Brown just draining that catch-and-shoot jumper with ease. And really, these are some of the toughest calls an official has to make. The Clippers have had two chances at the line already, making them both. One falls for him. In his canners checked in for Daniel Tice. And George drops them both. Oh, he's never rattled at the strike. Always has that nice soft touch on his free throws. Walker the pass to Tatum. Brown right side. And he drops in the layup off the glass. Brown's got four points this quarter. Oh, you love the level of concentration Brown maintains. I mean, taking the hit well and finishing in style. Pass to Zubat. We've got 155 left in the first half of basketball. Celtics leading by 10. Walker surveying the floor. Kicks it to Tatum. Brown outside. Shot clock at five. It's stolen by Green. Williams passes to George. Back to Williams. There's the three. And Cantor pulls it down. Cantor's got five rebounds tonight. Tatum dishes to Walker. The shot. No good on the shot. A bit long that time. He's got nine points on three-pointers in the first quarter, but still looking for his first three of the second. Williams for three. It's in and good for his sixth field goal in ten attempts. And they are absolutely stroking it from beyond the arc. Here's Walker. Whistle blows. Bucket is good. And he'll have a chance at the line to make it a three-point play. And doing a really solid job getting that ball inside. Much more of a physical presence here in the second. This will be his third free throw shot of the game. And with numbers like this, how about 87% on the year? He's been somebody they love having at the line. Smart's checked in Find for Tatum. Lane. And Find Los Angeles making a change here That's as shot. well. Magruder's checked in. Oh, 
On the free throw, no good. A shoot first point guard who can fill it up in a hurry. That's Walker, and quite simply, he's one of the game's best scorers. Now here's Williams. He's coming off a 13-point game against the 76ers in Philadelphia. Yeah, but it wasn't all about himself. I mean, he kept everybody else in the loop. His passing was tremendous. High arcing shot, and Walker finishes it off. Walker's got six points in the quarter. Yeah, that was the third straight high percentage look the defense has allowed. The, the defenders have got to start putting bodies on bodies. Three seconds separate the shot clock and game clock. Outside, Williams. In the corner. Shamit with it. And it's off from three-point range. Here's Smart. And so it's the Boston Celtics. Their lead at 11 points to end the quarter. Their shooting has been the big key. Their percentage from the field so far has been terrific. And now let's catch up with David Aldridge, who's standing by from the sideline. All right, Dave. Thanks, Kevin. Here with head coach Brad Stevens. Coach, what did you think was the main edge you had? Well, I thought defensively we were a lot better, um, and then that led to some offense. But obviously, we're playing a bunch of skilled guys, and we're able to spread the floor, and that's helpful. You have to make them work at both ends. Thanks, Coach. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks so much, Dave, for the great interview. Don't go away, folks. We'll be back for the second half of basketball right after this. And now, the 2K Sports Halftime Show. Hey again, everybody. I'm Ernie Johnson. Shaq is here. Kenny's here. You're watching the NBA Halftime Show on 2K Sports. Kemba Walker was the story in the first quarter. He had 23 points, three rebounds, and three assists. Taking a look at the Celtics, Shaq, what do you think? Well, they really dictated the pace of the game with their transition game. They got out on the break every chance they had, and the time they could push the tempo, they did. And a lot of times, it kept the defense scrambling like eggs with the cheese and apple juice. Kenny, what's your take on the Clippers? Well, the perimeter D is just too loose. I mean, there's no excuse for letting the team rain that many threes on you. And at that high a percentage, guys aren't fighting through screens. They're not staying with their shooters. They're not helping out. Just bad basketball on a defensive end. They've got to tighten it up on a high level in the second half. And that'll about do it as we get ready for the second half. Let's take you down to Kevin Harlan. Shout out to my main man, Joel. Joel, what up? And after a very lopsided first half, we'll see if things play out a little more evenly here in the second. What a game we're seeing from Kemba Walker. And if he can keep shooting from deep like he did in the first half, he's going to be more than a handful. Yeah, the defense didn't do a very good job of staying connected to him. We will see if they make an adjustment. And there wasn't too much drama in the first half, but maybe things will tighten up here in the second. Getting underway in the second half, here's the five for Jock Rivers. Morris is out there with Kawhi Leonard. Then it's Patrick Beverly. Then it's Paul George. And it's Zubat sitting at the center, locking down the middle. To the middle. And here's Morris for three. It's hauled in by Brock. And the great shooters know when they've got enough opening to go for the three. I didn't think it was a bad choice on that possession. Man, can you always depend on him or what to lead you to the right place with that pass? Money. Out of Willer High School in Georgia, Jalen Brown was ranked second in the class of 2015 after Ben Simmons. All the powerhouses came called. He went the unexpected route, choosing UC Berkeley. Here's Walker. Kawhi Leonard making his last shot. And the foul called on Marcus Morris. That is his first foul of the game. About one minute played here in the second half. Walker in the post, defended by Beverly. Oh, and that's just a great defensive effort there by Beverly. He is all hustle. Knocked loose. Hayward with the ball. 
George picks him up all alone. And Hayward with the stuff. Well, if you don't take care of the ball, fellas, that's what can happen. Absolutely, Greg. That makes the turnover even more painful. Yeah, going defense to offense in an instant. Every team now calibrated to do that. And the basket is good. Got it to go through on the contact. So a free throw coming up. Great opportunity for a three-point play. And Cal Berkeley, not the biggest basketball program in the country. So, Chris, what led Brown to go there? Well, former NBA All-Star Sharif Abdul-Rahim, another Wheeler High alum, took the same path. Look, Kevin, both of them welcomed the intellectual challenge. Now, Sharif, not only Find could he lane. hoop, but now he's One the shot. president of the G League. And Jalen Brown, he's the vice president of the Players Union. Leonard, no good on that one. You know, there are differing opinions as, as to who the best defensive player in the league is, but no matter what, Kawhi is always in the discussion. And there's the call on Patrick Beverly. That will get him his fourth foul of the game. Los Angeles making a switch here. Harrell's checked in. Now, here's Tice. He's covered closely. Down low, Walker. The basket good off the assist from Hayward. Hayward's got four assists in the game. The defense not putting up any fight on the inside. They've allowed 10 straight points in the paint. Now here's Beverly. He's averaging just around eight and a half points a game. Morris against Tatum. Shot clock at six. Here's Leonard. Can't hit that one. Hayward with some nice D. Brown the pass to Walker. They double team Walker. Leonard against Hayward. Pulls up on the wing. And a kind roll that time off the rim as that one falls. Hayward's got four points this quarter. And that makes him four for five. I mean, uh, I think that's pretty good numbers. I mean, they've got to be pleased with how things are playing off so far. Now here's Leonard. He's got ten. And there's the call on Gordon Hayward. That's foul number two for him. Third quarter here and three minutes have come off the clock. Here's Leonard. Hands the shot with nobody near him. Leonard's got 12 points in the game. Yeah, and for mid-range, Leonard's jump shot is money. It doesn't matter if it's off the dribble or catch and shoot. He, he never loses his touch. Now here's Hayward. He's got 10. There's Brown with the three. It's in and he's a very efficient five for six on the game. And really the story of this second half. One team getting the shots they want. The other, not so much. Yeah, you can clearly see which offense is better right now. We'll see if that continues the rest of the way. Tatum against Morris. Pass to Beverly from outside the arc. Rebounded by the Celtics. Brown's got five rebounds tonight. I I'd love to see them impose themselves a little more on the backboard. That's a great way to find confidence. Always a surefire way to get back in the game. Now here is George. After Jalen Brown's miss, George passes to Morris. And Tatum pulls it down. Tatum's got his fourth rebound with that last one here tonight. Beverly against Brown. On the wing, George. Beverly feeling it out a bit. Leonard finds Beverly. Six on the shot clock. Here's George. Walker with some nice D. Celtics leading by 16. In the corner, it's Hayward. Again, the miss by the Celtics. And so Beverly will bring it up for Los Angeles. They host the Kings after this game. That'll be the first of two straight at home. Leonard dishes to George. Basket is good. He'll get a chance for one more Shots at the line. Good. I love the spirit he's shown Hit. tonight, Shooting particularly one. on the offensive end. Yeah, and he's gotten to his spots and capitalized. He just needs a little more help from his teammates. Players have different ways of leading. Some guys, Chris, are loud and fiery. Others let their play do all the talking. 
What was your approach? Well, Kevin, it depended on what situation I was in. When I was in Sacramento, I could be the quiet, fiery guy that led through my actions because Vlade uh, was more of a vocal guy, and, and we had a really good-spirited team, so I didn't need to, to do much uh, besides what we did in practice. In my younger days, when you want to win, you want to get out there, and maybe everyone doesn't have the sense of urgency uh, that you do. You're, you're a little bit more vocal, but I, I've always believed that the best leaders, uh, no matter how, how well they communicate or, or anything else, the best leaders lead by example. And if uh, you're telling everyone what to do and you're not doing it, uh, usually it falls on deaf ears. So go out there and do it by example first, and, and everybody will follow. Good advice. Yeah, that's two bombs in a row from long range. Now let's go to the sideline and catch up with our Hall of Famer, David Aldridge. Well, Kevin, last season the G League tested out an expansion of the clear path rule. Now that expansion is making its way to the NBA. It should discourage those intentional fouls that slow up teams on the fast break. Fans wanted it, and analysts clamored for it. And that will allow the amazing athletes in this league more opportunities to show what they can do on the fast break. You're right, David. A welcome Take a change. Take a break. Thank you. Two shots. That free throw good from Leonard. Many thought the Raptors or Lakers would land Kawhi, but in the end, he came to the Clippers to write his own legacy. Returning to Southern Cal, where he grew up, was a big part of his decision. The big surprise was how Kawhi was out recruiting other stars behind the scenes to join him with the Clippers. Both free throws good from Kawhi Leonard. Celtics leading by 14. Hayward outside. And there's the call on Montrez Harrell. That's his first foul. Marcus March checked in for the Celtics. And the Clippers making a change here as well. Williams has checked in. Here's Wanamaker. He's got five. And the call on the shot that sends him to the line. It's going to be on Montrez Harrell. Wow, wow, he got whacked on that one. Shouldn't be much debate there. Zonix have gone 9 of 10 from the line, so making the most of their chances. And, and how about as a group, 80% on the season, one of their best attributes. good on the free throw he hits the second from the line now here's Williams 15 points in the game and there's the pass to Leonard over Hayward. Los Angeles with another miss. Just a solid performance on the interior. The rebounding has been off the charts. I see that time from Leonard. And the activity he shows around the rim it is why he is such a respected defender. Yeah, you can see why he's established that reputation. Strong understanding of how to defend at the rim. That's tipped. And up the court come the Celtics on the break. And block. That one goes careening off the glass. Oh, just fantastic defense for Morris. Getting right in the face of the shooter and coming up with the rejection. Passes it to Harrell. Outside Leonard. Outside Williams. Five to shoot. Three-pointer. And another field goal in this total. Make it 7 for 14, shooting 50%. That's a nice play. Getting the separation he needs for a clean look. Yeah, he may just have to put a little more arc under that. But either way, it's a tough shot. So it's the Clippers now. After the basket by Boston. 
pretty early to be over the limit. That foul situation is something we want to keep an eye on. Greg, I'm just so impressed with the level of finesse and craftiness that Lou Williams always plays with. And Kevin, you don't stay a perennial six man of the year candidate at, at Williams' age without having more than a few tricks up your sleeve. He, he's so good in tight spaces and can find a way to get a shot up where others just have to kick it out. And he can't get the first one. And Williams is sort of the classic instant offense guy. Whether he's coming off the bench or starting, he can provide a spark whenever they need one. Williams, he's checked in for the Celtics. And the Clippers with a change here, too. Rodney McGruder's checked in for Kawhi Leonard. And he sinks the second. Austin leading by 13. Here's Wanamaker. He's got six. Pass to Tice. Smart with the ball. He's defended by Harrell. Just five on the clock. From deep three-point range. And it's going to be a 24-second shot clock violation. They turn it over. A moment here to look at the numbers for Tatum. He's been dominant over the last month. Averaging about 24 points, seven rebounds, and three assists. But to have a scorer like him consistently deliver you points makes such a big difference for a team. Yeah, yeah. It, it gives you something you really can rely on going into every game. And, and you can also work off of him to look to create for others. Morris into the lane. And no good that time. And the Celtics going the other way now. They led by as many as 18 points. Wanamaker the pass to Tice. Oh, good interior offense. Those passes have to be right on target. Williams against Smart. And he gets it to go. 21 points for Lou Williams. Pick works well there. Not much resistance from the D. No, it's a lazy effort. Let's just be honest. Hoping the shooter misses. That doesn't constitute defense. Tatum's shot is off. Tells you a little something about their team. They've been able to pull in front despite his troubles tonight. Here's Magruder. Nothing yet on the scoreboard for him. Floats one up. The rebound by the Celtics. Here's Wanamaker. Great look, but off the mark. Clippers trail by 13. Magruder kicks to Harrell. Pass to Mann. Outside Williams. Takes the three. And Tatum pulls it down. Tatum's got six rebounds in the game. And slam dunk by Smart. You know, some scouts thought Tatum had tunnel vision looking only for his own shot. But he's more about team. Here's Magruder. On the wing, Williams. Morris outside. It's deflected. Well, he has to work harder to get a good high percentage look. I mean, he's been taking some bad shots out there. Smart with the ball. He's got 10. Magruder with the rebound. Clippers trail by 15. The dish to Williams. One fifty three left in the third. Man passes to Morris. And no good. Good work defensively by Smart. If his performance this quarter is any indication, I don't think he's the one who's going to let them out of the hole. Poked away, and that's out of bounds. Boston will retain possession. Backing up the points down low, well, that's exactly what these guys have done this season. Check out the top-scoring big men in the NBA. Fifth on the list, Jason Tatum. You know, there are different styles among those big men, but they have one thing very much in common. They can dominate offensively. Face up or back to the basket, they can get it done. Uh, yeah, Greg, I mean, the collection of post moves these young big fellas have is unreal. I'd say some 
of the most unstoppable moves in the game today. And they're beginning to just time flat out, out fall apart defensively right now, especially on the interior. And the Clippers call time here. And the lack of rim protection, top of the list. Without question. They're giving up too many high percentage looks, a trend that they'd like to reverse. The Celtics making a switch here. Cantor's checked in. And the Clippers making a change here. 116 left in the third. Shamit kicks to Magruder. And here is Williams. He's got 21. Shot clock at six. The Clippers need to get off a shot. Misses the three. And they've got a big lead, not just on the scoreboard, but really in the rebounding numbers as well. They double him with Green. And Williams with the stuff. Yeah, heard the whistle and then kept his focus and able to still knock it down. First trip to the free throw line for him tonight. And so far this season, it's it's been average at best at the line. Only 71% as a shooter. Celtics making a switch here. Walker's checked in. Zubats is checked in for the Clippers. And that one misses. Clippers trail by 19. Magruder passes to Williams. 34 seconds left here in the third quarter. Trying to end the drought. He's off on that one. Excellent D there from Williams. Walker in the corner. It's up a three. Drains it from beyond the arc. Walker's got five points now in the quarter. Offensively, defensively, they are in total control. Uh, starting to take over here, building a big lead that could ultimately prove insurmountable. Williams for three. That one doesn't go. And so it's the Boston Celtics. Holding a 22-point lead as the quarter wraps up. The scoring has been tremendous, and they are shooting lights out with very high accuracy. And we've got more NBA action on 2K Sports coming your way after this break. And a worthy candidate tonight as we take a look at our State Farm assist of the game. And he sliced the D wide open with this feed. They had no chance to prevent that basket. <laughs> no, that's quick decision making. You see a guy open, you can't hesitate. That, that, that's an outstanding play. And there have been two very different performances from these teams today. As we get going in quarter number four. Round the small floor with Tatum holding down the four spot. Walker in smart, the guard. And it's Cantor in at the five down low. That's who's in the game for the Celtics. And so here are the Clippers. Walker against Williams. To the right side. Beverly wide open. That's good. And it's Leonard with the assist. And Beverly has wonderful moves and has a great stroke from downtown. Gotta love how he rises up with plenty of confidence. Got a piece of it. And it's out of bounds. They say it was last touch by Williams. Paul George, he's checked in for the Clippers. Here's Walker. Over in the corner, Brown. Six to shoot. Got a piece of it. Stolen by Zubac. Tipped away. The pass to Shamit. Rebound, Boston. Tatum's got nine rebounds in the game. Getting it done. Yeah, and they've shown effort and aggression in the paint, really, right from the tip. Their rebounding edge right now, massive. Oh. 
just over a minute played here in the fourth. Now Cantor. He kicks to Tatum. Lock at six. Over in the corner, Brown. It's good from long range. It's amazing. The development of Brown as a scorer, and he's an exciting two-way talent. He's showing us all that tonight. Now, here's Shamit. He's covered by Brown. Teardrop shot, and that one's good, Shamit. Oh, perfect timing there to knock down the teardrop. Walker the pass to Brown. And there's the call on Patrick Beverly. That's his fifth foul. And you've got to be more careful in that situation. That's his fifth foul, and now he's walking a fine line. Gordon Hayward's checked in for Smart. Walker the pass to Canner. Hayward right side. And the rejection by Zubots. Inside. And he makes the bucket, gets the whistle, and now a three-point play chance here for him. And you know what? He's shaken off the cold shooting performance from the first half. Free throw good from Kawhi Leonard. I like that he's playing with the edge here in the second half. I mean, he didn't get to the line once in the first half. And Walker kicks to Hayward. They get a hand on it. And now here's George, the fast break opportunity. Oh, what a beautiful point. What intensity. Did you see that? Great. And hustle paying off there for George in the open court. Gets up court in a flash and finishes before the D can even react. Now here's Tatum. Passes to Cantor. Now Brown. Just five to shoot. Pass to Walker. A three ball. Busted. No good that time either. Clippers trail by 15. To the inside. Leonard. Doesn't go that time. Excellent D from Cantor. Tatum wide open. He fires one. Again, the miss by the Celtics. He gets the playground jumper and can't make good on it. You don't get many chances easier than that. Celtics leading by 15. Brown outside. Walker finds Brown. Hayward looking around. Shoots over Leonard. And it's off the back rim. No good. Oh, their movement is good, and they get the ball into the right hand. Now, usually, he drops those in between jumpers. Pass to Zubats. Over in the corner, Beverly. Down low. Here's George. Two free throws coming up, and they call the shooting foul. And you know what? You allow a guy to get right to the rim like that. That's your only option. Take a break. Take a break. Two shots. That free throw good from George. Marcus Morris is checked in for Landry Shamit. is no good. Austin leading by 14. Brown outside. Outside Tatum. They could use a bucket and it's good. Two points. Of the height of football. No wonder Tatum's knocked down mid-range from there. Clippers trail by 16. 
Now here's Beverly. Zubac trying to break loose. Controls the rebound and puts it back up and in. Yeah, they're going to have a nice little run here. Walker against Beverly. Hayward passes to Brown. It's hauled in by Beverly. And so Beverly will bring it up for the Clippers. They've only given up five points here in the fourth quarter. Here's Zubat. The pass to George. Knocks it loose. And the whistle blows on the backcourt violation. He went over and back. Much better job of just taking care of the basketball, really putting the onus on the defense. Daniel Tice is checked in for Ennis Cantor. Walker the pass to Tice. Back to Walker. Celtics passing it around. He muscles it in through the contact, and they call the foul. He's on his way to the free throw line. And the determination of Brown is phenomenal. No one is going to stop these shots from going down. Here's Beverly. Passes it to Leonard. Over Hayward. And Leonard gets it to go on the assist by Beverly. Beverly's got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. And Walker kicks to Tice. Tatum on the wing. Five to shoot. The kick out to Walker. No good with the triple. Clippers trail by 15. Pass to Beverly. Back to Leonard. Stolen by Walker. And up the court come the Celtics on the break. Walker leading the charge. Here's Tatum. Morris with the rebound. Morris has got his sixth rebound on the night. Leonard on the wing. Leonard draws the double. Back to Beverly. Six to shoot. Outside Leonard. Lob pass to George. Trying to go for an alley-oop, but excellent defense and anticipation there to stop it. Brown the pass to Hayward. Over George. And it's the Clippers with the rebound. Zubats has got rebound number eight here tonight in the game. And the whistle blows. It's going to be on Daniel Tice. That's his first foul. Pass to George. And there's the foul. It's on Jalen Brown. And that'll be his third foul so far. Austin on D. 22 is their biggest lead. And stolen by Hayward. Intelligent defense. He reads the play. Gets himself in the perfect position to come up with the steal. And Morris comes over to help. Jump on, jump and wrestling for it there, but no players. one has possession. We'll have a jump ball. And the Celtics with possession here. Walker against Beverly. Shot clock at five. Back to Tatum. The shot's good on the assist by Walker. Walker's got his sixth assist on the night. How about this turnaround? He played a fringe role in the first half. And, and now he's the man for them. Tipped away. It's stolen by Brown. To the middle, Tice. 
It's not going to go for him. So Los Angeles will take it the other way. George with the ball. It's rebounded by Tice. Tice has got four rebounds now tonight. And here's Walker. Hayward outside. Back to Walker. And the foul called on Kawhi Leonard. That's his third foul of the game. Bounce pass from Tatum. Hayward finds Walker. Let's it fly. Rebound by the Clippers. George looking over the floor. Now Beverly. Leonard the pass to Zubats. Some solid defense from Brown. Inside. Here's Tatum. And contact on the shot, so he'll be shooting free throws here. Marcus Morris picks one up there. Uh, yeah, the footwork, the positioning. Tatum's a difficult cover inside. And that one falls for Tatum. And, of course, the Celtics traded back from number one to number three to draft Tatum in terms of readiness and absolute steal. And so Tatum nails them both. A negotiating concession the league wants from the Players' Union. Prospect attendance course at the draft combine and team-wide access to player physical. Well, th this is a tough one because I don't think that a team that is not interested in you should have your physical. And uh, we all know that information is shared, and so it, it should be genuine in the teams that are truly interested. So I understand agents holding back on that. Medical information is, is something very serious that just because you have an opportunity to be drafted, your, your information shouldn't be spread all across the world just because you're at a combine. It'll be interesting uh, to see how it plays out, but basically you just want a level playing field for, for everyone. And, and if we have that, it'll be better for everyone. Williams with the ball for the Clippers. Today, Chris, I heard Commissioner Adam Silver talking about that it strikes him sometimes how isolated players can be with cell phones and headphones, and those things wouldn't help that. Uh, is it something that you've noticed or that you're concerned about? You mean with my nephews and nieces and friends that are younger and kids walking <laughs> oh, across everybody. the street looking at their phones and not even looking both ways? You're I mean. your play-by-play -play partner, whoever it might be. <laughs> yeah. Oh, come on. You know, Kevin, those are the times. And so I, I, would, tell, uh, I would tell Adam Silver, Mr. Commissioner, yeah, that's a basketball problem. That's a world problem. How, how are we going to stop yeah. any of that? We're, we're here now. There's it's, it's no putting that genie back in the bottle, Kevin. And here is Zubox after Paul George getting his three to go. Outside Leonard. Outside for George. Six on the shot clock. Fades and shoots. It's rebounded by Tice. Tice has got six rebounds in the game. Walker against Williams. Tatum deciding where to go with it. It's stolen by Morris. Over in the corner, Williams. Here's Leonard. And they call the foul, so a chance at the line for one more coming up. The tenacity on that interior, just battling, bringing that effort and will for second chance points. Mind the lanes. Mind the lanes. One shot. Yeah. 
There's a minute 47 left here in the fourth quarter. Williams against Walker. And they call an illegal screen here. Now beyond the leaning, you could see his feet weren't set on that screen. Easy call. Uh, yeah, even a slight movement is going to catch a ref's eye. I mean, they're trained to focus on that. George against Brown. Now, here's George. He's tightly guarded. Misses the hole. Now shooting eight for 14. Williams against Walker. Hayward outside. Back to Walker. Shot clock at six. Excellent D there from Williams. Los Angeles has gone two or three in the fourth quarter from long range. Good shooting so far. And there's no doubt about this one. Playing with a lot of confidence tonight. It's a statement victory for the Celtics. You know, it's tough to put your finger on the deciding factor in this one, but I'd say that the shooting accuracy made the difference. Yeah, I think you're on point, Kevin. They got better looks, and that tends to lead to a better field goal percentage. And when it's all said and done here, this will mark their 38th W on the year. No doubt they came in very motivated to win this one and finish the season series at a game apiece. And something we've come to almost expect is greatness from this guy. Such an overall great performance it was for Walker. He was doing everything right, and the points came in bunches. Definitely had the hot hand. Williams kicks to Morris. He dishes it to George. Let's the three fly. Knocks down the three ball. And there's never been any question about George's three-point range. He just goes through stretches where he knocks down the three at a ridiculous rate. And so it's Boston easily grabbing this one. Some good moments throughout this one, but they have the clear advantage down the stretch. Yeah, I mean, I, I love the way they executed on both ends of the floor, completely under control for the vast majority of the game. And whenever there was a misstep, they just... All right, David, thank you. And that's going to do it tonight, folks, for our broadcast. For Greg Anthony, Chris Weber, and David Aldridge, this is Kevin Harlan. Thanks for watching the NBA. Presented by 2K Sports. See you later.